Hi. Hello. Hi. Ah. He's a spook. Yes. Yeah, I know. Welcome back to Director's Choice. From Toy Story to The Office, there are some movie franchises and television shows that have that unique evergreen quality to them, which makes them perfect for pop culture references. Bo, what are you doing here? No time to explain. Come with me. Okay, let's go. I'll let you in on a little secret. I've been very much looking forward to this moment. Very, very much. Would you have ever thought there was a connection between Woody's iconic Pixar franchise and the remake of a BBC UK mockumentary series? Probably not. But in today's episode of Director's Choice, we're placing Toy Story and The Office side by side because there's a theory that Woody is in the same world as the show, and we're going to attempt to prove it. Technically, Oscar, sorry. enough of the sass. Please. God. What is wrong with you? Andy, listen to me. How did this happen? Where does the crossover happen? And how is it possible that Kevin is the only one that gets it? Here's the breakdown of Toy Story existing in the same world as The Office. Shall we? You tell me who this sounds like. Before we get into the details of this epic crossover, let's take a look at the separate plots. Oh, fellas, hold it! Hey, boys, put me down! Retreat, Retreat, fine, to the go, You're stealing him! Oh. Ah! Hold it right there. In 1995, Pixar gave us one of the greatest animations ever. Toy Story. And it was so amazing that they had to make three more installments on the franchise. The animation follows the adventures of a squad of toys owned by a young boy named Andy. These toys range from action figures to cowboys, and through the fascinating power of animation, they could talk, but not to humans. The main Buzz Lightyear, the coolest toy ever. Look, he can fly. Oh, and shoot lasers. He's sworn to protect the galaxy from the evil Emperor Zerg. The main characters among the toys, Woody, the cowboy, and Buzz Lightyear, the space ranger, had a love-hate relationship that ultimately centered on friendship. Woody, being the toy who had been with Andy longer, was obviously displeased with Buzz's appearance in the house. But with time, after resolving several levels of conflict, the two found a way to establish a unique friendship. They slowly understood each other and helped out whenever the other was in trouble. Their adventures became the foundation of the Toy Story franchise movies, and they were able to overcome several challenges as a team. And that's one of the pointers that support the theory that Woody is in the same world as The Office. Michael, in order to expedite these negotiations, we are prepared to make you a very generous offer. And we are prepared to reject that offer. Although The Office does not have the same plot as Toy Story, there are a lot of similarities in the themes portrayed by the two productions. The Office follows a group of workers employed in the Scranton branch of a paper company, Dunder Mifflin, who are subjects of a documentary. This, hey, 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 this might not be what I think that I don't even know is in there because there are a lot of presents in my car and I don't know which is which. These individuals have different personalities, and their roles range from regional manager, Michael Scott, to receptionist turned salesperson, Pam Beasley. But the office structure doesn't directly reflect the interpersonal relationship between the workers. Hey, Coselli, the Cos, Cosby. <laughs> I love Jello Pudding Pop. The dry and sometimes dark humor among them blurs the boundaries of their job description sometimes, but ultimately they get the job done. Similar to Toy Story, the cast of The Office is a bunch of mismatched characters. All right, who did this? I'm not mad, I just want to know who did it so I can punish them. What are you talking about? At first glance, it doesn't seem like they all fit into the same office space, but after watching them for nine seasons, it's hard to deny that they have genuine affection for each other. And that fits right into the Toy Story plot. But that's not the only reason we think Woody is in the same world as The Office. Do you need some help? I can't decide what to get. Well, what do you like to eat? Well, I like pretzels. The 11th and 12th episodes of The Office season seven, which aired on the 9th of December, 2010, are collectively named Classy Christmas. Oh my God, it's the first snowfall of Christmas. 
Is that just so magical for you, little girl? In the episode, the regional manager, Michael Scott, learns that his old love, who he still has a very present crush on, is returning to the Scranton office. After forcing the office to cancel their first Christmas party, Michael makes Pam plan another party to fall at the exact same time as Holly's scheduled return to Scranton. No question about it, I am ready to get hurt again. Soon as Holly arrived, her dynamic with Michael kicked into play, unaware that he had canceled and rescheduled the holiday party for her. Michael had also swapped out his fat Santa outfit for a more sleek outfit consisting of a Kangol style hat and robe. When it was revealed that she was maintaining a relationship with AJ, despite breaking up with Michael because they couldn't do a long distance relationship, it definitely threw a ringer in Michael's plans and dampened his mood. And the kicker of it all was that she came to Scranton with a toy that AJ had given her, Woody from Toy Story. Not only is Woody the most loyal toy to Andy in the Toy Story movies, but he is also the most believing toy. And his appearance was definitely symbolic, especially as it infuriated Michael's jealousy to the point where the regional manager threw Woody into the garbage, and like that wasn't bad enough, poured coffee on him. And that's just the way it is. Toy Story plotline for the same year, as Toy Story 3 was released in 2010, Andy, the young boy who owned the toys, had grown up and was moving to college, and the toys weren't going with him, except Woody, who later gave them to a young girl, Bonnie. Now, our theory is that somewhere in all the adventure of finding his way back home, Woody made a symbolic appearance in the office. In the office, Michael and Holly were at odds because despite their amazing chemistry, Michael believed that Holly's relationship with AJ was still great whereas Holly was on the verge of a breakup, and Woody, the toy who had traveled to Scranton with her, would have known that. Similarly, in Toy Story, the toys were convinced that Andy had meant to get rid of them, whereas Woody knew that he wanted to keep them in the attic of his childhood home because he treasured them. And right in the middle of the misunderstanding in the office and the misunderstanding in Toy Story, we find Woody. You know what, Holly, I didn't mean to do it. It was an accident an accident born of jealous feelings. Despite the two worlds being as far apart as creatively imaginable, Woody found himself in similar situations with both humans and talking toys. Because he was so convinced that Woody was the representation of AJ and Holly's feelings for each other, Michael took out his anger and frustration on the poor toy. And Kevin was the only one who suspected that it might actually be the Woody from Toy Story. Wait, guys, listen. Toy Story is all about toys that come to life when people aren't looking. You don't think it's not possible. When Holly found out about the state of Woody, she was furious, and rightly so. It's obvious to me I'm not welcome here, but somebody better tell me who did this, or else I'm leaving. Although he tried to deny it, Michael later redeemed himself by washing Woody. The redemption is similar to the resolution in Toy Story 3, when the toys got to find their way home and realized that Andy had not wanted to lose them. The Toy Story franchise and the squad of toys showed that despite trials, arguments, and lack of superpowers, toys at odds could still have each other's best interests at heart, to infinity and beyond. The Office also showcases that theme, because despite inappropriate comments, flat-falling humor, and endless pranks, the Scranton office's Dunder Mifflin staff were best friends in a way. That's all for today. Thanks for joining us on the breakdown of what you need to know about Woody in the same world as The Office. Take a moment to look at this other recent clip by Director's Choice, and be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring that bright notification bell to get alerts for our latest videos.